You took time off of work, maybe due to COVID sickness or a million other reasons, such as taking care of your parents. But now you're feeling more ready than ever to get back into your dietitian private practice, and you're wondering where to start. In today's video, I've got you covered. It's normal to feel a little bit anxious and frustrated when you're getting back to starting your private practice as a dietitian after taking some time off. We have the tactical steps to help you reach your full potential as a dietitian, and it will require you facing some of your fears, such as feeling anxious but overcoming your anxiety and still showing up or maybe not wanting to do something such as have a conversation with a potential client or ask for a sale, but you still do it anyway. All right, now that we've covered that, let's get started. First question to ask yourself is why now? The most successful registered dietitians in private practice have a clear North Star or reason as to why they're doing what they're doing. Now, starting your dietitian private practice will require time and energy, and it requires a different skill set than being an employee for somebody else. So because you're taking on this challenge, you're going to want to be prepared for some of the setbacks that will come along your way. Starting something new will require energy and break from your normal schedule. And for many of us, that can feel really challenging because we want to resist change. But if you're willing to give it a shot, and you have a clear why or reason as to why you're doing what you're doing, that's going to help you get going on tough days. Now, a very common reasons why dietitians start and continue their private practice is due to debt. They might want to pay off student loans or due to philosophy. Registered dietitians want to practice based on how they believe in their nutrition philosophy, whether that be weight neutrality, weight loss, or chronic disease management. Another factor could be increasing your income potential. You want to increase your earning potential. And uh, another factor, in addition to the factors just mentioned, is impact. You want to reach more people. And so you know that starting a business will help you have the possibility for infinite impact, especially if you learn how to market yourself effectively online. Now, you might resonate with all of the above, but maybe there's one or two main reasons why you're motivated to start your practice. So I want you to think of that and comment below with which one stands out the most. Now that we've covered the why, let's talk about what. What will you sell? Online group coaching or maybe an online program like a membership or an ebook, or maybe you're taking insurance. Whatever it is you choose to sell or the multiple offers that you're selling, you need to get really clear with what service or product you're offering to a consumer. Next, think how you're going to deliver this product or service, meaning the technology if you're offering online, what will this tactically look like step by step? Now, those logistics are pretty easy to set up. The hard part comes with finding the right customer who's the best fit for your product or service. I do suggest keeping your offer really simple when you start and you can build with time. If you're using practice management software like Practice Better, you can always keep things simple and add automations with time. Now, if you're offering something like a group program, you also wanna keep it basic with minimum or no exercises until you get feedback from people to learn more about what they want and need in your paid program or service. Focus on feedback. You can't improve your product or service unless if you know that the person that you're targeting is enjoying the product or service that you're selling and then you're aware of what your shortcomings are, not that that's a bad thing, we all have shortcomings, so that you can make a better product or service to serve more people. Now, this will require receiving some constructive criticism. So I want you to remember that there are going to be some awkward moments in business. And if you can embrace that and learn, it'll give you a chance to help serve more people and make more money. I want you to reflect on your strengths. Now, we all have unique characteristics and personality traits, and it's important to leverage your skills. Uh, this is something that you might not be as aware of as an employee, but as an entrepreneur, this becomes pretty clear. Now, there are several tests that you can take that are free, like Myers-Briggs and the color code test that you can find online. I want you to learn about your strengths and weaknesses and focus on building your strengths and be aware of your weaknesses and sensitive to them as well. I'm a big fan of this free website called 16 Personalities. And you can learn from a free test from what's called Myers-Briggs, what type of personality you naturally possess. So they're classified into analysts. You can see here, uh, diplomats, centennials, and explorers. 
And so from your free test, you can learn where you fit in to these categories and then look at your strengths and weaknesses. And that's a really great opportunity for you to grow as a professional. If your strength includes writing, then you can learn how to leverage writing. If your strengths include speaking, then you can learn how to leverage speaking in order to get more clients and build more rapport with your potential or current clients. Uh, before I started Dietitian Boss, I had a nutrition consulting business. Before my nutrition consulting business, I worked as a clinical dietitian. I want you to check out my story in this next video.